Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the previous analysis. It was a nice, long, detailed video for all of you squash enthusiasts. Today, I'm going to keep it a little bit shorter and we're going to focus more on the technical movement side of things and a couple of other hitting techniques. So let's get into this right away. We're watching the movement of Ferris Dasuki going into the back left closed stance. And it's cool because it's from a different camera angle. So they zoom in and they show the angle from the back of the court. So let's check this out. So first things first, let's look at his split step. And you see right before Marwan hits it, Ferris is getting his feet off the ground. His eyes are on the ball. Because they've been rallying down the left-hand side wall, look at Ferris's tee position. This is going back to this idea of the floating tee. And I love drawing these arrows, so I guess I'll just draw some arrows for us. So what you'll notice is that a lot of players, depending on where the game is being played, which part of the court the game is being played in, I mean, they kind of stand in what's, I don't know if the official name is a floating tee, but it's the idea of this floating tee. So we're not physically on the tee all the time. We're in this general area around the tee, depending on where the game's being played. And this is where we can get into tactical stuff. And if you guys want to learn more about tactics, let me know in a comment, because then I can dig into that more deeply. But high level, we create patterns and then we break patterns. So I'm gonna leave it at that. If you wanna learn more, let me know. I wanna focus on technique and movement and physical side of things, so I wanna keep this a bit shorter than last time. So let me just do this so these lines don't stay for too long. But okay, so going back, we see his he's just starting to take a split step. Marwan is just about to hit that ball. He hits it. Ferris is already, his eyes are just always on the ball. And you see that his feet plant, feet are a little bit wider than shoulder width. If your feet are too narrow, you're not going sideways. If your feet are wider, it gives you that angle to be able to push sideways. So you're gonna see he's on the balls of his feet. Like I mentioned, this is the foot he's gonna push off of. He's on the balls of his feet, his right foot. And now he moves off. Where's the racket? See, his right foot hasn't planted yet. He's already just hunting the volley. His racket is coming up. So let's show you where that racket is because Marwan's body is just a little bit in the way over here. So you see his body is, his racket is pointed over here. He's getting it ready. His chest is starting to face the side wall. His eyes are on the ball. And look, he's he's already hunting that volley. He really wants that volley, just like all of the top players. But you can see you can see the reflection of the ball in the side wall. This ball is glued to the side wall, and Ferris is gonna notice this right away. And what's he gonna do? And this is where the angle gets nice. He puts that right foot down and pushes backwards. If he didn't make this movement. He would be doing what a lot of us do, myself included, which is go and force that volley. And what a lot of players do, I've noticed this with a lot of juniors I've coached, is that, and, and I've been, I'm guilty of this too, is that we pre-commit. So we say, okay, I'm going to jump on this volley, especially if you've kind of put the person in, under a bit of pressure. They're jumping on this volley before the person's even hit the shot. And if that ball turns out to be glued to the wall, They've committed so early and so far that they can't do anything other than take a swipe. And when the ball's glued, it's really hard to volley that. Either you don't hit it, or if you do hit it, it usually pops up into the middle somewhere, and then you're in trouble. <laughs> it's that simple. So you notice Ferris wanted to look at the volley, and then he realized he can't get the volley, and now he's adjusting. And he, again, like I said, that right foot comes down and you push back. So he's coming backwards, and here's the nice angle. He's pushed back. See, we can talk a little bit about technique here if you guys want. I don't know how keen you are to learn more technique. I'm going to guess you probably are. So you see 
he's got that nice angle let's see if that changes in a minute as he sets it up there so let's do it here he's got that angle over here here and over here the racket is nice and high there's one other little nuance and this is something that different people have different opinions about i don't know how clearly you can see it but ferris's index finger is significantly higher than the rest so his grip is kind of like this and some people say you don't want to have your finger up like that some people prefer the finger to be down the key is you want to have a little bit of space between your fingers because that gives you more touch and feel with the racket if you hold your racket like this kind of like a hammer you're going to have very little touch and feel if you space out you get a little bit more touch and feel i personally keep my finger up a little bit higher as well so that's why i noticed it and I wanted to point that out just to show you that hey your finger can be a little bit higher there might be like some challenges that could come if your finger is really high and you miss hit the ball you could probably tweak something um i'm not going to get into all those kind of details but i just want to show that it's fine to do that if that's what you do so now the other thing we noticed is that his body is coming in at exactly the angle we talk about all the time his feet are pointed towards the back basically into that back corner even the back wall his hips are there his chest is there his shoulders are turned everything is there but look where his gaze is his gaze is on that ball a lot of people don't realize this they think that if i'm looking at the ball i'm going to pretend that this is a side wall if i'm looking at the ball i'm looking at the ball like this but in reality you got to be set way back over here so that you can actually generate power by rotating and swinging through the shot but your eyes still need to be on the ball so i hope that this is something that is clear because it's a common error that a lot of players make so let's see so that there goes ferris and from a biomechanical position you notice his he's got that knee angle and we can draw it in for you guys if you like so we go, uh, I'm just copying and pasting the previous one so we can play around with it a little bit more quickly. So now you got that knee angle over here in that quarter squat kind of position I've talked about before. You see his back foot. His back foot is dragging in. Let's put this here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. That back foot is dragging in. He makes contact arm is nice and extended and you look at his, his racket follows through to the front wall and you'll notice his wrist position it's tough to see because it's obviously in slow-mo his racket is going to that front wall but his wrist is up if his wrist was not up he wouldn't be able to keep his racket there and he wouldn't be able to hit through the ball with a bit of an open racket face so you see over here, his wrist is kind of in this position when he finishes with that open racket face. And then from there, how does he move out? He opens up the body. He puts that back left foot down. So now it's that same thing we talked about in previous videos. He's pushing out from the right foot. He's pushing out and turning as he pushes out with that front leg. And then as soon as he kind of gets a bit of that turn, that left foot comes down and it pushes him forward. And you'll notice that here. There's that left foot. So he turned, he takes that little hop actually, and then his left foot is going to be the one that's pushing him forward. So see how he had an, he had a slightly different movement because he took a bit of a hop there, which is cool. So let's see that again. So we'll go in one sequence. So as soon as he's finished striking the ball, He's pushing out using that, those strong quads of his. Left foot touched the ground for a second, and then he hopped and he turned so that by the time his first step is coming forward, his chest is facing forward, and you'll notice his eyes are also in this direction towards the ball. And then he simply takes another step forward and starts getting ready for the next ball.
on the tee. So there you have it, a little breakdown of his movement. We talked more about technique in this situation as well, but you noticed he's on the balls of his feet, he's doing that back foot drag. So being on the balls of your feet activates different muscles. Doing that back foot drag actually does require some mobility and specific muscle strength. Being in those specific quarter squat positions, rotating, having the mobility to do that, having the strength to do that, critical if you wanna move like this. So again, I've mentioned it, I'll mention it again. I'm creating the program. I'm actually sharing a link where you can sign up if you're interested so that I can notify you whenever the program is ready. You'll see that in the description below this video. If you're interested in learning more about how to move like these guys, how to develop the appropriate strength, how to minimize your injuries, and then also I'm gonna go through a movement masterclass. And if you wanna learn technique, I'm happy to throw in some technical things in there too. I appreciate your time. I hope you got value out of this. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video.